Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlibiTutors.com and welcome to this video on batteries and fuel cells. So in this video we're going to look at some non-rechargeable batteries, we're going to look at some rechargeable batteries and we're also going to look at um, two examples of fuel cells as well. So I'm going to start with a non-rechargeable battery first. Now the most common battery is the zinc carbon battery. Now this one's quite a cheap battery, still buy them in the supermarkets, normally the budget range. Um, and they basically have a zinc anode, a carbon and manganese dioxide cathode, and the electrolyte uh, is ammonium chloride. Uh, and this is the diagram that I've drawn here to show how the battery is actually made up. So you can see here that the zinc anode is the actual casing of the battery. Uh, and then the carbon manganese dioxide, this is like a powder that's mixed into like a middle casing, right in the middle of the battery. And then through the middle of it is a carbon or graphite uh, rod that's through the middle uh, and it's capped off with a metal top and that's basically the dimple that you'd see on the top of the battery. Uh, and then in the middle bit here, so in between the casing and the inner casing is ammonium chloride electrolyte. Now this is a paste um, and this is found in the middle, quite corrosive as well. So it's not very nice to, um, to have um, if it leaks out. So the equations regarding this are just two half equations and I've written them down here. Um, in the exam, you'd be expected to either construct the half equation yourself using uh, protons, water, and electrons. Now, if you're not sure on how to uh, balance half equations, then if you just click on the link below, and you can have a look at the video to do with that. But uh, what I've done is I've just written out the two half equations here, um, and they might give you E0 values as well uh, to go either side of it, and they might get you to work out the total uh, E0 of the cell as well. Um, so I've just written the two out here. So this is zinc forming zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So this is um, the uh, oxidation process. And then the reduction process is written underneath. This is manganese dioxide producing uh, 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 producing water and uh, another dimanganese trioxide, which is the product over here. Now, normally this reaction, actually when you produce ammonium to go into ammonia, this produces hydrogen gas. Now, hydrogen gas is very quickly oxidized by the manganese dioxide, and it turns into water. Um, but this is important, because actually, uh, this reaction is not reversible. Uh, so it's a non-rechargeable battery. So once it's used up, it can't be reused again. Uh, the reasons why is because you need hydrogen to turn the ammonia back to ammonium if you were to recharge the battery. But because the hydrogen is oxidized to water, there isn't any hydrogen left, and hence, um, we can't get the uh, original reactants back. So this reaction is not a reversible reaction and hence is non-rechargeable. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, some rechargeable batteries. Now these are the ones where you can obviously plug them back in, uh, reuse the battery over and over again. Uh, and we're going to look at two examples. And the first one is the lead acid battery. Now this battery is found in cars. Um, and um, the equation goes... Well, the, the formation of the battery, it has a lead dioxide anode, and the anode is the positively charged uh, part of it, um, and then the lead cathode, which is the negative end, uh, and then the electrolyte is the sulfuric acid. So this is the solution that sits between the positive anode and the negative cathode. So the equations are, again, I've written out the two equations. Um, so we've got lead reacting with the sulfate ions. Now this comes from the sulfuric acid electrolyte, and it will form lead sulfate and two electrons as well. Uh, and we've given the E0 value as well, uh, which is minus 0 0.36. Okay, and on the other side, which is the lead dioxide anode, which is this one here, again, that's in contact with sulfuric acid because the electrolyte is the same. Uh, we also have H plus ions and electrons. Again, we balance this uh, half equation. Uh, it will form lead sulfate and two lots of water. Uh, and this is given the E0 uh, of plus 1.69. So straight away what this tells us is that this reaction is uh, reducing because we've got a positive E0 uh, and this one is oxidizing because we've got a negative E0. Uh, and I've already flipped this equation round the other way as you can see. So instead of the electrons being on this side, I've already reversed it to show actually what's happening in this reaction. So what we can do is you can write an overall equation from these two half equations here. And so that's what I'm going to do here. You can see that it's important. You can see we've got uh, lead oxide here. So I'm going to put PbO2. And uh, we've also got Pb, which is lead. We've got two sulfates there. So we'll put two SO4. 
2 minus on this left hand side, we've also got 4 H pluses as well. Now the electrons would cancel out, as you can see on here, so we're just going to cancel these electrons out. There you go, because they appear on ones on the left and ones on the right, so they cancel out. Uh, and then we form our product, which is uh, PBSO4, so it's lead sulfate. We actually formed two of them, actually, because you can see we've got one here and we've got one there as well. So we put 2PBSO4, which is lead sulfate, uh, and we also formed two lots of water. And so this is the overall equation. This is called the um, ionic equation. And this is shown is exactly what's happening. So we've got lead oxide and lead electrodes that are effectively being turned into lead sulfate and water. Um, and this is the reaction that occurs uh, in a car battery. Now, car batteries have a, uh, have a charge or a voltage of about 12 volts. Um, so one cell, this is just for one cell. One cell won't be enough, as you'll see in a minute. So we're going to calculate our E naught of our cell, and we always do the um, oxidized, uh, the reduced version minus the oxidized version of our half equation. So I've written this down here. So there's our reduced version plus 1.69 minus the oxidized number, which is 0.36. And if we put that into our calculator, um, or you can just do it in your head actually, uh, this would give an E naught value of plus 2.05 volts. And that's overall for the whole equation. And you can see uh, we need roughly uh, we need roughly about six of these in a row uh, to form our 12 volts in total, and that's effectively uh, what a car acid battery is like. Now the problem with this is the acid is obviously really corrosive; it's really heavy. Lead is toxic as well, um, so it's not really uh, practical. Well, not really practical for portable use. Now we do have obviously more portable use like nickel cadmium batteries. These are quite useful in things like cameras. Um, they're more portable, they're about the size of the standard tube battery. Uh, in fact, they are the same size, and um, so they, they're obviously a lot more portable. Um, they are more expensive though than your standard uh, zinc carbon batteries, because these ones uh, are reasonably cheap. These ones are a little bit more expensive because you can recharge them. Uh, but the good thing is that you can recharge them about 500 times, and they will lose their uh, ability to um, holds charge as well eventually and they will uh, have to be thrown away eventually but because you can reuse them lots of time there's less waste going to landfill so you could probably recharge this 500 times whereas you might have to buy another three or four hundred of these batteries every time you recharge this up so it means a lot less waste going to landfill and that's specifically important because we've got some quite uh, harmful gases in here uh, and chemicals in here which are, are pretty bad so uh, that's really important to make sure that you know the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, batteries like this in comparison to non-rechargeable batteries. Uh, also, just uh, just come back onto this one here, just the point of being corrosive. Um, this case here, um, some batteries actually leak, especially the non-rechargeable batteries. And the reason why is the um, zinc, if you look at this half equation here, the zinc is effectively used up to form zinc 2 plus. And because the casing is made of zinc, the zinc effectively depletes uh, and the casing gets thinner and some of the chemical can leak out, especially the corrosive ammonium chloride that's inside, it can leak out of the case. Uh, and these things should be thrown away immediately once they start leaking. So it's a bit of a, a design flaw, I suppose. Okay, I'll just come on to the last thing, which are fuel cells. Now, fuel cells are one of these things which is uh, right up to date, modern chemistry. Uh, and a lot of chemists are uh, currently investigating uh, new ways of producing fuels, alternatives to petrol and diesel. The electric cars currently out in the UK quite a lot, uh, and fuel cells are used in some countries as well. So we're going to look at the hydrogen fuel cell. Now, what happens is we've got um, two electrodes. We've got a positive and a negative electrode. We have um, the anode and the cathode, uh, and we also have a membrane that sits in between. We call this a polymer um, electrode membrane or polymer exchange. So it's like an exchange membrane. So what happens is we're going to label these things. You can see we've got a one next to the anode, a two in the membrane. We've got step three, which is pointing to the wire, and step four, which is the cathode. So if we start at step one, which is at the anode, now what happens is we push hydrogen uh, into, this, um, into this cell, uh, and the hydrogen reacts with a platinum electrode to form H plus ions and two electrons. So this is what's happening at the anode straight away. Okay, and then, 
the next thing is we've got this, like you say, we've got this polymer uh, electrode membrane or you know, this semi permeable membrane. Uh, and what happens, this is there to um, allow H plus ions to move through the membrane and towards the cathode, but it doesn't allow electrons to go through. And so that means that the electrons have to go through, this is number three, have to go through this wire instead. And that can be used uh, as a source of energy. Obviously, we can use the electron to do something with it. And then, because the H plus makes its way through the membrane into the cathode, the electron will move across to this side as well. But going through here is oxygen. So we've got O2 going in the other side, uh, and the half O2 will react with the H plus ions that have gone through the membrane and the electron that's come through the wire, and it will form water as a product. Now, this water is the only emission that's given out from this product here, and you can see it here. So this is really good because it's a very green way of producing energy. However, you've got to be careful because uh, hydrogen, uh, which is this obviously this uh, gas here, is normally used, is normally produced by electrolysis of water. And if you have to electrolyze something, you need the electricity. And the electricity uh, is normally made, well, the electricity is normally made from using a fossil fuel. So that produces carbon dioxide. So the methods in which we produce hydrogen is actually quite polluting. Um, and until we get a method that we can make hydrogen without causing too much pollution, then actually uh, fuel cells are polluting in an indirect way because of the manufacture of hydrogen. Okay, there is an alternative though that we're going to look at, and the alternative is to use methanol or ethanol uh, in a fuel cell, and it works on the same principle um, as the uh, hydrogen fuel cell. The advantages include things like you've got a higher hydrogen density in methanol than you do in uh, hydrogen gas, and that means you don't need as much fuel, but to get this, you don't need as much fuel, the volume of fuel, uh, you don't need as much, so that effectively it's more efficient uh, than a hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, also, it's made in large quantities anyway. We get a lot of methanol from uh, either from crude oil, uh, where we can extract it from there, or we can do it through fermentation of, um, of crops. So this is obviously a very environmentally friendly way of producing it as opposed to uh, hydrogen gas as before. Uh, it's easier to store as well, with being a liquid, it's just chilled in a refrigerator, uh, whereas hydrogen is obviously a gas, it's very flammable, explosive, so um, not very good for that reason. Uh, and also uh, methanol, we can, like I say, we can use it, we can make um, methanols made from carbon dioxide, so that can reduce the uh, emissions that's put into the atmosphere, so we're actually reducing our carbon dioxide use, but at the same time, we're making some use out of it by making a fuel, which is methanol. And again, just like before, at the anode here, uh, we've got the methanol, which is here, and that will react with some water, we'll react it with water, and we'll produce carbon dioxide, six electrons, and six H pluses. So we've effectively oxidized our methanol and produced H plus in the electrons. Now the electrons will go around the wire, the H plus will go through the polymer membrane uh, into the cathode, which you can see here, there's the H pluses that's gone through the membrane. The six electrons have come through the wire. We've mixed that with oxygen, which is just as normal, like we'd have in a hydrogen fuel cell, uh, and then we produce three molecules of water. So again, our only emission is water. So um, it's really, really useful in that way. So there's all your different types of batteries and fuel cells. You've got to remember the equations. Make sure you can apply them as well. So for example, working out E0 of the cell, uh, and just one final thing is that rechargeable batteries, if you wanted to, this is the equation for discharge, um, rechargeable batteries, if you want to recharge it, all you do is just flip the equation the other way around, and that's the equation for recharging it back up. So uh, as long as you can remember that, you should be fine. So that's it. Bye.